I'm telling you, it's just gonna be for a second. We just gotta scan you real quick. No, you're not gonna be off forever. <laughs> Give me my cut. So today we're actually gonna demonstrate the object scanning capability with full color on the Einscan H2. Brand new, in stock, ready to ship at visionminer.com slash scanners. If you're not sure which one to buy, give us a call. We're here to help you with that. Anyway, let's dive right into it. We're gonna scan R2. This is a shiny plastic object. There are some black areas on it that are gonna be a little tougher. For the most part with the color mode, this should pick it up great. There's a couple different ways to scan it, but I'm gonna show you the best one. In the software, we're gonna do white light mode because that's gonna get us the color texture. Now you can also get color texture in infrared mode, which sometimes can be better for black and different things, but we'll see how this goes in regular white light LED scanning. And I'm just gonna do half a millimeter for the sake of speed. We can go down to 0.2 with this scanner. And I could do feature scan, but what I noticed on this scanner is the blue plastic wasn't actually showing up, but in texture alignment mode, it showed up just fine. So. Let's hit apply and we're gonna dive right in. I'm gonna keep my working distance to about the same because I'll be close. I'll be in this sort of region that's gonna get me the best color textures. I'm gonna use the data quality indicator in just a second, but let's go ahead and start real fast. I'm just gonna hit the go button and we're gonna start scanning in white light mode. Now I'm gonna adjust my working distance and my brightness throughout this process. See as I've got too much red there. So I'm gonna take it down just a little bit. If it's all red up in this camera window, then it's overexposed and you won't get any data. Now, one thing I've noticed with this scanner is it helps to go really nice and slow just to keep the tracking so that it knows where it's at. You don't jump around too much. You can follow it from one area to the next. And if it loses tracking, I just go back to the first area I scanned. It can usually pick it right back up. Compared to the HX or the free scan laser modes, tracking is much more difficult in white light scanning modes and texture tracking modes. Now I think this may be a little bit easier. If I take my working distance and I increase that, let's go to like 605 and let's go up to 300 because I'm really not that close. This definitely works a little bit better with the uh, larger working distance. Let's see if I can come all the way around, get the back side of that foot over there. All right, let's pause real quick. Here we go, not bad. Got all the color, got the texture, this looks great. I could take this and export it and put it as a prop in a video game or something, but we wanna look at how much data we really got, which is this button right here. So I can see I need to spend some more time on the feet, obviously that foot, I didn't get anything. And the backs of the legs both need a little more work, maybe under the legs right here and under the entire model. Plus a little bit up on the forehead right there. So let's just, uh, pick it right up where we were and leave it in that data quality indicator mode so that I can watch my data become better as we go. I want everything to be green so that I get all the little crevices and little areas and things like that. Now I think it's a hot spot on the actual model right there from the studio lights. So I'm just gonna come around to this area, get it from this angle. Yeah, that fixed it right up. I'm gonna hold it at an angle that's gonna give both cameras the best view that it can there and I can turn it on its side too. One thing to really think about is how you're holding the scanner. You know, you don't have to hold it up and down. You can go all the way around. It's like a paintbrush. Remember going slow really helps the full texture and everything capture a lot better. check out our data. So as you can see, it's, it's really an art form of distance, angle, brightness, working distance, everything else in a big symphonic orchestra of get it just right. It's an art form as well as a science. It's not, it's not hard, but it does a little experience really helps make it go a little bit faster. Okay. So this is pretty good. So we can see the trouble areas are definitely these little clear plastic areas. If we want to do a complete model, so we can print this thing out or put it in a video game, whatever we're doing. I can go like this, delete that extra data up the floor, and just delete that right there. I can apply that, edit, save that, and then we generate the point clouds. And in case you're wondering about what kind of computer you need to make, to make this work, we're using a i7-9700 from about four and a half years ago, what, 2018, and 64 gigs of RAM. It's using about 28, 29, 
and the GPU, our NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 is doing just fine. The GPU, the graphics card really comes into play at the end when we mesh the file. The CPU, as you can see, is pegging out. That is processing the point cloud data. The RAM more so determines how much data you can process. So as you can see, having 16 to 32 gigs, I mean, I would, up for at least 32 gigs. That's really gonna help, especially with the H2 and the higher resolution color texture. That's a big deal. It's a lot of data, it's a lot more. It's got more to process. All right, here we go. Whoo, this is pretty good. Prettier than any other color scan I've seen. And this isn't even the final result. Now I can turn off the texture if I want and just look at the scan data. Okay, so again, you can see the hot spots on the black. It looks like it did pick up that black, okay. But then the, uh, the transparent plastic right here, not so much. Let's just get a full scan out of this. I'm gonna turn R2 on his side and I just moved the head. So this part isn't gonna align. So I'm gonna delete this part of the scan when I'm done here before I align the two data sets and make a new project group. Same thing, texture alignment, apply. Then I'll just get the bottom of the feet and a little bit underneath and we should be good to go. And I'm gonna sit there for a second and let it capture all that data so that it has more to work with. Remember the data quality indicator, which I'm gonna pause and actually turn it on so that I can see how good the data is. If you don't have enough data, it's not gonna know where it's at or where to go. Add data, I need to get a little closer based on the left side of the screen indicator. This seems to be working well where I hold it in one position to get the best quality data and then the tracking is even better. That should be good, let's check it out. Turn off the quality indicator, check out the colors so you can really see. Still struggles on the black surfaces. Infrared mode should be a little different for that. Not bad, let's delete the table. Let's go apply. It's gonna process that and we're gonna generate the point clouds again before we go align. So here we go. All right, we got our data. Very good, got a little bit of color there. Infrared mode would probably do better on these little feet. We'll check that out in a minute. And I'm just gonna go align my two scans. Really easy, press one, press two, and hit apply in auto feature detection mode, and it should do a pretty good job. All right, so we've got everything aligned. Very nice. Now when I go to actually mesh the model, I can do no filter, low filter, watertight, unwatertight. You wanna 3D print it, you wanna go fully watertight, you wanna reverse engineer it, totally unwatertight, semi-watertight, it's the in-between if you're not sure. I'm going to go unwatertight so that you guys can download this file and see how it actually did on this live demo. Now for the record, I didn't spend too much time scanning this before, so this was literally the first time I scanned anything with the H2 in color mode. All right, now we have our meshed model, and as you can see, it made a huge difference with the color texture. I wonder what we, would happen if we did it watertight, but as you can see in the preview, it overlaid a couple different textures here. It cleaned it all up and it made it darn good. It is a genuine 1997 toy. And so it's a little bit dirty, a little bit faded plastic. And that actually shows through in this scan. Yeah, yeah, I know, you look great. So here I can take this, I can confirm and I can save out my mesh. And I can also do, you know, a texture. I can change the brightness and the contrast. I can simplify, optimize, smooth. I can even go over here and do a little bit of measuring. So how tall is this guy? We're gonna do top to the bottom. There to there, he is 408 millimeters. Post-processing again, I can go save my scan back to my computer and I'll save it as an OBJ and a 3MF and an STL just for having it. I'll also save out the ASC so you guys can download this project file and open it up on your own computer at home. All right, we're saved out. Now I got a bonus for you guys. We're gonna do the same thing in infrared mode just to quickly compare and see how much better or different it really is. And go back to my scan mode and start over in infrared mode. Texture alignment. So on the person, on the portrait mode, it defaults to one. But over here, it's still 0.5. Medium objects, 0.3. All right. I'm gonna hit apply and let's do it. All right, let's see how this does. If I get that an angle, hopefully it won't be as overexposed. It's still overexposed. So, I mean, that's bright. Turn it all the way down. Zoom in a little bit for you.
a little bit of speed. I'm going a little slower. I got more of the object before moving on to other areas. The working distance is definitely shorter and you can tell when I'm right here, getting that back leg. And I come here and now it's not even seeing the back leg. And that was like six inches. So we've got a little bit extra data that we'll be able to delete because that did not align it properly. So I'll just try to be careful here. You know, I'm just gonna select all this, get rid of that. And then let's see how this turned out. So now it's gonna process and then we're gonna do the point clouds. Okay. Yeah, 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 we're almost done. We're almost done. Cool. So now I'm going to generate the point clouds and wait for that to finish and check out the final result. Okay, so we've got the infrared mode. This is the preview, so I'm going to go mesh real quick and we will do unwater tight again and apply just to check it out. All right, so as we can see, it looks pretty good. It, you know, spent a lot more time on it and you'd get a lot better data and everything. This, I just wanted to show you guys the tracking, etc. If you need something that tracks better, gets more detail, is faster in general, we have other scanners like the free scan combo. So that is the IR mode and the white light mode with the Einscan H2 brand new in stock, ready to ship today at visionmatter.com slash scanners if you're looking into it. But if you need something with more speed, more accuracy, etc., let us know. We're here to help you pick the right scanner for your application and we have a whole range. So maybe something like the free scan combo and it's 26 laser lines or what have you. Just hit us up, we're here to help. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Have a positive rest of your day. I'll see you on the next video. No, we're not gonna leave you off for the rest of the day. We'll turn you back on and bring you in. Don't worry. You feel good, right? Yeah.